This third video on the chain rule contains even more complicated examples where we find that we can have a chain rule inside of a chain rule. So my first function I want to find the derivative is y equals sine cubed of 4t. Now I'm going to rewrite that so that I can see the outermost function is actually something cubed and that something happens to be sine of 4t. So if I take the derivative of my outermost function, that function looks like u cubed, we would get 3u squared. And if I put that back in terms of t, that would be 3 times sine of 4t all squared. And what we're going to do to get our final answer is we're just going to work our way from the outside in taking derivatives as we go. So our outermost derivative is 3 times sine squared of 4t. Our next innermost function is going to be our u, and we're going to rewrite that as a second function, y2 equals sine of 4t. Then I see another chain rule, and we'll let the 4t be our u in this case. So if we write our function in terms of u, its sine of u, its derivative is cosine of u, and if we write that in terms of t, it's cosine of 4t. And that'll be the next part of our final answer. And finally, our innermost function is this u here, and its derivative is 4, so we need to multiply our entire answer by a 4. So here I have the derivative of the outermost function, which was something cubed, times the derivative of the next function on the inside, which was sine of 4t, gave me cosine of 4t, times the derivative of the innermost function, which was 4t, gave me 4. And if we clean this up, multiply our coefficients together, it's going to be 12 cosine of 4t, times sine squared of 4t. Okay, let's try another one. Here, if I see my outermost function as something raised to the third power, we can let that be our u, then our function in terms of u is u cubed, its derivative is 3u squared, and if I put that back in terms of the original function, it's 3 times 2 plus x squared plus 1 to the fourth, all squared. So that's the derivative of the outermost function. So we'll write that down here. And then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the next outermost function. So we'll let our u from the first instance be our second function. And again, it's a chain rule. And here I see x squared plus 1 being raised to the fourth power. So we'll let that be our u. And if I write this function in terms of u, I get 2 plus u to the fourth, its derivative then, derivative 2 is 0, and I get 4u cubed. If I write that in terms of x, that would be 4 times x squared plus 1 cubed. So that's the derivative of that part of our function. So we multiply it by the derivative of our outermost And finally, we need to take the derivative of our innermost 
function here, and u prime would be 2x. So we multiply that down here, and if we clean this up, putting my coefficients together, I get 3 times 4 times 2 is 24x times x squared plus 1 cubed times 2 plus x squared plus 1 all raised to the fourth, all squared. And that would be my final answer. And the reason I'm writing it in the order I am is that we write things as least complicated to most complicated, generally, in math. So if you're wondering why I'm switching up the order of things, that's why. Okay, here's another one. We have y equals e to the negative sine x squared. So my outermost, I see that I have e to the something, and we'll let u be our negative sine x squared. So if I write that in terms of u, I've got e to the u. Its derivative would also be e to the u, or e to the negative sine x squared. So that's the first part of my derivative. It's the derivative of the outermost function. And now we will let y2, or a second function, be the next outermost function, or the u that we chose, which is negative sine of x squared. And again, I see a chain rule here. Inside the sine function, I have an x squared. So that would be my next u. And if I write this function in terms of u, I get f of u is negative sine of u, and its derivative would be negative cosine of u, or in terms of x, it would be negative cosine of x squared. So that's the next part of my derivative. And finally, I have to get to the derivative of my innermost function here and we get u prime is 2x. So this whole thing gets multiplied by a 2x. And if I clean that up, move the coefficients out front, I'll get negative 2x cosine of x squared times e to the negative sine of x squared. Okay, this one's even more complicated, but we're just going to simplify it by working our way from the outside in. So, I see that I have cosine of something. So, we will say our function in terms of u is cosine of u. Then its derivative would be negative sine of u, or negative sine of the square root of sine of pi x. Okay, so that's the derivative of my outermost piece of the function. And I know I'm gonna run out of room, so I'm gonna come over here and write that on this other slide. So our first part is negative sine of the square root of sine of pi times x. Now we need to go back and get a second function and take its derivative. So we'll let our y2 be the u we chose here, and I'm going to write that as sine of pi x all raised to the 1 half power. So we're going to let sine of pi x be our u here, then our f of u is u to the 1 half, its derivative is 1 half u to the negative 1 half. And in terms of our original function, that makes it 1 half sine of pi x, oops, all raised to the negative 1 half power. So I'm going to put that into our final answer. So the next part 
is the one half times sine of pi x all raised to the negative one half power. And then we need another function for this u here. So we're going to let that function, a third function, be defined as sine of pi x. In this case, I'm going to have another inner function. We're going to say this inner function is pi times x, so that's my u. My function in terms of u is just sine of u. Its derivative is cosine of u or cosine of pi x. And that'll be the next piece of our derivative. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine of pi x. And I'm not quite done yet. Let's go back. And I still see that I need the derivative of my innermost function, which is pi times x. And when I take the derivative of that, I just get pi. So that's the final piece of the puzzle here. We're multiplying this by pi. So let's clean this up. And I'm going to write it as negative pi times cosine of pi x times sine of the square root of sine of pi x over 2 times the square root of sine of pi x.